Hey, what's happening guys? I got a question from a viewer named Martin who says he got a rotary encoder with his Arduino kit and he doesn't think it's working and wants to know if there's a way to test it. Well, there sure is. There's many ways to test it. Um, probably the easiest way to test it is just to run an example sketch on your Arduino and see if it outputs anything. But the downside to that is it's kind of uh, assuming you've got it wired correctly and if you're new to this you, you may not so we can go over all that and I'll show you a couple of methods to test it but uh, you know in case you're new to rotary encoders you don't know what it is a rotary encoder think of it kind of like you well, kind of like a potentiometer I guess no not really it keeps track of position is what it does see it moves in clicks this is a mechanical this is called a mechanical incremental encoder there are also absolute encoders. The main difference is an absolute encoder remembers its position even when power is removed. An incremental encoder does not. And this is a mechanical. There's just a little circuit board down in there with a couple of uh, different rings. And depending on which way you turn this, one of the two output channels, you see they're marked clock and DT, will fire before the other one. That's called output in quadrature. If you're a radio guy, you know what I'm talking about. It also has, you see, switch. It has a clicky switch. One thing about these mechanical incremental encoders is they generally need to be debounced, which can limit the speed in which they can be used. All right. So let's go over a couple of things. They require power, generally 5 volts plus ground. So we'll put it in a breadboard. like so and then I will hook up 5 volts to it and we'll bring in a meter now I'm going to turn off the bright overheads so that you guys can see this meter better there we go I have a set for voltage DC voltage We'll just put this one here in the ground. And then we're just going to test our power rail to make sure we're getting 5 volts. We are. And then you can see here, clock, 5 volts, and data, 5 volts. So what is going to happen is when I turn the encoder, you should notice a little bump in the volts. You'll see it drop a little. Not that. I haven't turned it yet. It's important to have a good connection here, and I don't. All right, let's try this. Let me move this over here so I can get out of the way of the, your view. <laughs> there you see. Uh, let me find something better to plug into this here. How about... Hmm, one second. All right, now I can just touch that pin, and we got a much better connection. Now, as I turn this... You see how the voltage drops, and doesn't matter. Here I'm turning it counterclockwise. Clockwise, doesn't matter. Same if I probe the other channel. Doesn't matter what direction. It just causes basically a square wave output, which we can look at on the scope. All right, so let's hook this up to the scope here. I'm untangling my cables so I know which one is which. Okay. So here is channel one that we will put to the clock pin, and I'm also going to connect it to ground. Oop, sorry, bump the camera. And there's channel two, which we will connect to the data pin. Very nice. All right, now let's see if I can swing down here, zoom out, and then turn up so that you can see the camera. I have a light on? Hold on. There we go. Get this cable out of the way here. And let's see if we can get everything in the frame.
one second okay there we go everything is set up now if I turn clockwise and you watch the screen you can see that the blue channel channel 2 triggers first and if I turn it counterclockwise you can see the yellow channel triggers first let me put this into a single shot mode for you all right I'm gonna turn clockwise and you can see the blue channel triggers before the yellow channel so channel 2 is triggering first and then channel 1 is triggering now if you turn it counterclockwise channel 1 triggers between before channel 2 so let's put this back to normal mode as I turn this you can see I'm turning clockwise and then counterclockwise let me put it into auto maybe you can see a better idea counterclockwise clockwise but that should give you an idea of what the output looks like all right now let's talk about how to use it with the Arduino so here's a standard Arduino Uno this is the SMD version but it doesn't matter if you have the SMD version or the through hole version let's turn the lights on so you can see better okay so we have the 5 volt coming out to the red rail ground to the blue rail then I have my grounds bridged across just so that we have ground in both directions or on both sides of the board rather now I'm going to attach the encoder then I'm just going to grab some jumper wires and we'll hook it up Yeah, I know I'm going into a lot of detail here, but I get people who tell me they're just beginners and they need the detail. So I'm giving them the detail. So the plus goes to the red. And obviously the ground goes to the blue rail, which is your ground. Like that. And then I'm going to connect up Uh, one channel to pin two and the other channel to pin three and the reason I'm doing this is because we're going to use interrupts those are our interrupt pins on the UNO alright so there's a nice close-up view of how it's all connected and that's really all we need for here so let's go over to the computer and have a look at the example code for the encoder library. Okay, so here you can see we have the code. We have one pin on two, one pin on three, and then we have, um, where does the encoder begin here? This is the encoder library, encoder step counter. And you can see we create an instance of it, our encoder step counter, encoder, pin 1, pin 2, then pin 1 goes to 2, pin 2 goes to pin 3, you see how easy it is. Serial begin, encoder begin, and then we do an interrupt, encoder tick. And now I'm going to turn the encoder clockwise, and it should count up. 1, 2, 3, 4, and if I count, turn it counterclockwise, three two one zero and if I keep going it'll go negative and go back and go positive again the only downside is these generally need to be debounced and if they are not debounced what will happen is if you turn it too fast it'll just completely lose one or two counts which may or may not be a problem if all you're looking for is whether it goes up or whether it goes down but if you're looking for exact 
position, yeah, that can be a problem. So I hope this video helped you guys understand rotary encoders just a little bit better. They're not hard to use once you understand how they work. And there's plenty of libraries out there that you can use them with Arduino and Raspberry Pi so you don't have to do the heavy lifting and trying to figure out how to program them. Makes things a little bit easier. Um, I'll put links down below to a couple videos I've done on rotary encoders and a link to the library I used here. If you guys enjoyed this video, I hope you'll give me a thumbs up. It really helps out the channel. Please feel free to like, comment, subscribe, and please uh, check out the Patreon page if you're interested, and also the Teespring store. I have some uh, new stuff in there. I've got a limited edition poster with the resistor color codes on it. When we reach 100,000 viewers or subscribers, that poster is gone. So get one now if you can really help out the channel, allows me to keep making these videos for you. That's it. I'm out. Peace.